circuit. We had a great race earlier on, and we're ready for a second go of it. Jake Sanson alongside Chris Milbourne. This will be another interesting test, and of course, even though the circuit has changed, the weather conditions have changed because the sun has started to go down. That will make the circuit considerably cooler than earlier. It certainly will, and again, we've got a fantastic grid here, uh, something along the lines of 26 cars here, uh, separated in no less than six classes on what we can see from our screens right now. On the right-hand side is Saif Alamari in his uh, 977 Porsche. He was the outright winner. Alongside him is uh, Hilal al Mazruri. Uh, then we have Rea Lucas and Femin de Fuchs uh, with Alexander Stanivas and Amir Faisal. And Rene Munich is on the fourth row of the grid with Amir al Mahere alongside for company. Rene Munich, of course, won in Class 1 earlier today, looking for a back-to-back -back win as well. So let's see if we see him on the top step of the podium. So the... Uh, uh, grid being prepared here for our final race of the day for the NGK UA Pro Car Championship and of course the final race of the weekend for them too but we will see more Clios racing tomorrow because of course the Gen 5 Clios will be doing standalone races tomorrow here at the Dubai Autodrome so of course for the Clio guys they have to keep it nice and clean but uh, we saw some fantastic action from the Clios uh, earlier on today uh, Pierre Varysmina will be the uh, uh, the furthest Clio up the grid because of course he's in the number 20 we do have the uh, older generation Clio that's the Gen 3 car uh, which is uh, uh, lining up on the uh, fifth row of the grid. Actually, they actually line up alongside each other because we can just see that from our uh, view as we have right here. There we have Spin uh, uh, Spinkowitz in 11th position on the sixth row of the grid with Eamon Sadat alongside for company. Also in uh, the older spec Clio as well. Great to see uh, Eamon Sadat and more Bangladesh. She's actually uh, joining the championship because Avak Anwar has certainly uh, brought that flag up here and uh, bringing the pride of Bangladesh with him because he has been a, uh, a star in the AE86 category. Uh, he starts all the way down in 22nd at the moment. He's on the uh, 11th row of the grid, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on the number 44 because you can guarantee that he'll be carving his way through. Uh, so the final preparations here underway uh, for the uh, start of the NGK UAE Pro Car Championship and it looks like the final orders are being given. A thumbs up to Rennie Munich from his team as the final personnel now will be starting to work their way off the grid. Yes indeed, the grid is being ordered to be cleared. Uh, so we'll be racing soon enough as we descend into darkness here. I think we've got a few, well, we've got about uh, half an hour or so of uh, sunshine left although it will be hanging low in the sky because of course now we have a completely different race on our hands because it will be, as Jake said before, it will be a little bit of a different situation here. We raced uh, with the sun in the sky. Now it's dipped low. So, of course, a new challenge here today for the NGK UA Pro Car drivers. Of course, it does get dark remarkably quickly here in Dubai. So, obviously, uh, these uh, interesting battles that the drivers have, it's obviously going to be a very, very... Uh, interesting and intense uh, type of race this the second and final race of the weekend in the UAE Pro Car Championship it'll be the Clios that come out to support the Formula Regional Asian Championship and the F4 UAE Championship tomorrow but uh, in the UAE Pro Car Championship a very different type of race this one a second uh, type of conditions much darker much cooler temperatures plummeting by the wayside throughout and we're definitely going to have uh, an interesting uh, rough of drivers uh, trying to challenge for the victory could be a few different uh, uh, battles out there based on what we saw earlier on based, uh, because some drivers may deal with these conditions slightly differently but it's worth remembering that recently when we had the Dubai 24 hours here of course it is the longest nighttime period uh, that you will see for a 24-hour endurance race I'm fairly sure pretty much of anywhere in the world for sports car racing if I'm right I think it's the longest period of darkness uh, of anyone uh, of any 24-hour uh, endurance race uh, of its kind other than maybe Daytona possibly that might be a slightly longer period of night uh, than Daytona so when it gets dark here it gets dark ridiculously quickly so by the end of the race we may even be almost pitch black so, yeah, those are some uh, challenges to face here for the NGK UA Pro Car Championship. So, final few preparations underway. There's still some grid personnel on the grid here uh, before the start of the race. So, uh, uh, not sure if maybe possibly someone's out of order. No, because it looks like we're going to be double-checking the grid here. Uh, but we will be getting underway shortly as one of the officials now working his way down uh, the grid. But as we said, Hilal Al-Mazuri... 
sorry, Hilal Al Masruri will start from pole position with Safe Alamari alongside for company. So actually, uh, it's uh, Hilal on the left hand side of your screen, and on the right hand side is Safe Alamari. Of course, he raced in the Dubai 24 hour two weeks ago. He raced in the six hours at Yas uh, last weekend as well, and he's back for more. He's been bit by the racing bug, and the Rabdar Motorsport team here have done a phenomenal job with the Porsche uh, here, and it's great to see them actually because, of course, that team is all Emirati when they raced in the endurance cha uh, endurance rounds of the uh, Dubai 24 hour and the six hours, and of course, they have an Emirati driver uh, at the wheel. Safe Alamari, though, he used to race in the A86 category, not in this uh, NGK UE Pro Car Championship, but he used to race when they used to race their own series uh, a number of years ago, and of course, was a, a race winner multiple times and a champion in that series, so it's great to see him still racing here in the United Arab Emirates, and of course, behind the wheel of the Porsche here. Ray Lucas will share the second row of the grid as uh, Bit of a, a long, a bit of a delay here, Jake. Here yeah, before the start, it is a bit of an unusual one. I'm guessing, obviously, there's still uh, just a few little boxes to tick. You can see a few drivers actually trying to cool themselves down. I could see uh, Rick, uh, is that Coomba's car. Uh, basically, he's just uh, flapping the door open and closed, open the doors, trying to ventilate it a little bit. Because even though uh, the sun is coming down here and the lights are coming on on the main grandstand, and obviously the headlights are all going on, it's still very warm indeed in the cars. So uh, I think it's obviously going to be a bit of a prolonged wait uh, for the drivers. And so you tend to find that in those situations, the driver will just uh, try and ventilate the car. And your pro problem is the aircon isn't going to work uh, in these race cars quite the same way that they do in your normal family sedan. So uh, you've just got to uh, try and keep cool as much as you possibly can. And if there is a prolonged wait on the grid, then, well... Unfortunately, you have to take matters into your own hands, as Ricky Coomber obviously did. Yeah, and a lot of these cars will be equipped with some sort of tube system that will actually blow cold air, or but it won't blow cold air, it will funnel cold air into the cabin to keep the driver cool. But of course, when they're waiting on the grid, they don't have that cold air flowing in because, of course, they are stationary. But it looks like we have been given the go-ahead to go racing here. Is uh, Ricky Coomber still trying to get some cool air into his car there before the start of our final race of the day and the final race of the weekend as well for the NGK UAE Pro Car Championship? Uh, the final grid personnel being e e evacuated there as the see the board come out. So we should be going racing soon enough here at the Dubai Autodrome. The safety car peels away. That, of course, is the BMW M3 competition. A fantastic car here uh, to uh, keep the field where they should be. And, of course, serving as our safety car here this weekend. The Porsche roars to life there and uh, laying down some fresh rub. And I don't think they really need to do that. It's not a standing start here. It's going to be a rolling start. Uh, or wait, we'll actually wait and see when they come across the line if it will be because that's usually something you do when you're having a standing start. You want to lay down some rubber so in, to ensure that stickiness is there to get the ideal getaway. Well, there are two times you do that. One is when you are trying to lay down the rubber to make sure that you get a good start uh, from a standing start position as you would. The other is if you're a guy in a Porsche ready to race some hell. Well, so that was quite nice from uh, Zayev Alameri just trying to uh, light up the tire. Oh, sorry, that was Hal Al Mazuri's car, wasn't it? But yeah, the safety car going around, driven by Mikhail Kovlovsky and uh, his partner at the wheel, of course, Catalan Wojciu. So uh, it'll be fascinating to see uh, what the drivers will do when they are released from the safety car. But certainly over the front end of the field, you can see the pole sitter is Saif Alamiri. Hello, Almazri is up alongside. Then the number four BMW of Fabian Dufio. And then you have uh, Rhea Lucas, who is there in position alongside. Then it is uh, Amir Faizulin and Alexandro Sanivas, Omer Almaheri and Rene Munich from Pierre Bryce Mena and Jahid Karim. Uh, then it is Ayman Sadat and Jezek Spinkovic, Kevin Day and Leo Lucas, Ahmed Almayalhi and Eduardo Miranda, uh, Rahil Taneja and Stuart Hall, Ricky Kumba and Charlotte Simmons, Avik Anwar and Botti Almazrui, and then Ahmad Almajid will be 23rd and last at the back of the field. Should be a very interesting battle, a great uh, challenge for the competitors but we're definitely going to have an interesting race look how dark it is at the back of the circuit of course this isn't like uh, other race tracks where it's floodlit around the course so they are literally going into the darkness here and this camera position doesn't really give you a sense of just how dark it is out there it's uh, fading fast the light and the drivers are actually going to find that the checkered flag can't come soon enough and I wonder where the rest of the field is. Because here comes Alexandros Sanivas. So it looks like quite a gap. So the safety car trying to bunch up the field here for the start of the race. And there seems to be a few cars trailing there. And as Jake said, down towards turn 10, it's quite dark. It's actually quite dark now going into turn 14 through the bowl complex as well. Uh, as here are the AE86s. Good to see at the back of the grid is the uh, 286 of 
that is Ahmed Al Margin, who unfortunately had a problem uh, in the first race. Great to see him that the team have got that car up and running again, because of course local hero here. Great to see Emiratis on the grid uh, throughout the race weekend in the NGK UA Pro Car Championship. So working our way through the bowl here, the safety car slowly brings them through, but it won't be slow for much longer because we're about to get underway now with our second race of the day for the NGK UE Pro Car Championship. The field looked to be in position. There are a few uh, cars that uh, maybe need to catch up. And you can see there the Clios. You can see the, the difference between the two as well. We've got the Gen 5, we've got the Gen 3 as well. There's two Gen 3s. Now, they're not racing the same class as the Clio, as the Gen 5s. They're in a separate class. So they're in uh, the Gen 5s are in the Clio Cup. And I think in uh, not class one. Uh, yes, it is class one that the uh, other two uh, Clios are in. And there you are. You see them on the left hand side, the Rent to Race one. And then on the right hand side is the uh, uh, other Clio there. But it looks like we're about to get ready for racing here. It will be a rolling start. And uh, the lights are out. And a Away we go here for the second time. A whole gaggle of cars. It looks like we're going to go four, five, even possibly six wide as we work our way down towards turn one here for the first time in race number two. Rene Munich there flanking to the outside, uh, looking for a way past Alexandros Animas, looking to make some moves already. But Hilal al Mazruri got a fantastic start over Safe Alamari and got the jump on him pretty much immediately going down towards turn one. So who's going to be brave on the run on the brakes down to turn nine? Uh, sorry, down to turn 10, because that's going to be the next big stopping point. Although they looked like there were a couple of cars going for an apex or two there on the run through turn 17 and 18. And it's getting very busy, getting very hectic as Alexandro Sinivas goes wheel to wheel there with the number four BMW of Dufio. So Fabian Dufio going with Anivas. And uh, it looked like Rennie Munich just about staying out of trouble as they get out of the way there. Look how dark it is at the back of the circuit. It's pretty much the Divide 24 for hours all over again as they come into the braking zone in the Clio race and up the inside that's Jezik Spinkovic alongside Kevin Day so they go wheel to wheel as they battle away for position Alexandros Nivas is trying to get up alongside one of the Porsches in the mix there I've got a feeling that is the 21 of Rhea Lucas it is indeed so uh, Fabian Dufio trying to move up forward and there is the eight car that of course is Leo Lucas who has made a big start and has already started to pick off some competitors around the course. That is one of the AMG GT4s. That is the 79 of Amir Fezulin. So Amir Fezulin is uh, just uh, running in behind teammate Omer Almaheri at the moment. But out in front, the leading two cars are both Porsches. It's the 7, Halel Amal's Rui, in front of Saif Almeri at the moment. But is this going to be a great close race between them or are they going to disappear and leave them to it? I have a feeling that whatever issues were plaguing Hello al Mazruri a little earlier, they seem to have gone on top of them. And now Sam is going to go past our position down the main straight on the run towards turn one. Are we going to see Sayyaf Alineri in the 977 Porsche pop out and try and make his way through? He's going to have a long go of it. This is brave, and he's going to make it happen. What a move. Excellent run from Saif Alimeri. He was the winner in race one earlier, and that was a bold lunge. He had to know that that was going to work. He was a little bit tentative when he got on the brakes, but once you're there, you've got to commit to the move. You've just got to hope that the driver alongside you is going to give you the space, which is exactly what Helal al Missouri did, and that is a great overtake. I think he knew that move was coming, Jake, because I don't know if you spot, spotted that going through turn one. Uh, Safe gave him a cheeky little wave as he went on through. <laughs> uh, but of course, yeah, Safe Alamari now threw it into the lead of the race and the lead in the category as well. So 977 now up into the lead of the race and the AMG GT falls from Dragon Racing sticking together as well. Amir Al Meheri was shown as the fastest man out there on the previous lap, but uh, no doubt now Safe Alamari will start taking those fastest laps to himself as uh, we've got the two AMG GT4 cars in close proximity, a great battle between the two of them, of course, in a separate class uh, compared to our two race leaders. So we're now down towards, the, we've gone through turn 13 now, and we're up into turn 14 for the second time here. And Hal Missouri now, unfortunately, losing a little bit of ground to Safe Alamari. Of course, Safe has had a very busy couple of weeks uh, doing a number of endurance races across the United Arab Emirates, and he's been using the same car as well that they did in those endurance races so he knows this car a lot better probably than anybody else at the moment and he's uh, well he's had experience around this track already this year not the international circuit configuration but the rest of the circuit during the 24 hour as he's across the line now to complete lap number two the gap is it's 1.4 seconds between our two race leaders and then it is eight tenths of a second back to uh, Amir Alvaheri who leads the uh, uh, in 
in the 81 in that category with Amir Faisalin currently running in fourth position. Rio Lucas is fifth. Alexandra Sanimas is leading uh, in a class one. However, that's just that's just changed around because now uh, Rennie Munich has gone round uh, and taken that position away uh, to now lead cl uh, class one ahead of uh, Alexandra Sanimas. And they've got the slower Cayman GT4 in front of them as Rennie Munich looking on the inside. A little bit of a lock up there in the left rear, but uh, both cars get through. Here comes Alexandra working on the inside. That was mighty close there. Uh, there was definitely a tinsy bit of contact there between the two of them. They did a great job there to keep keep off one another. Well, Alexandra Sanivas nearly gave Rennie Munich a major headache ahead of the FIA WTCR campaign later this season. I don't want to replace uh, panel damage uh, this early in the season. We're not even racing until April. So uh, a fascinating little battle between these two who are contesting the Class 1 honours. But Rennie Munich and Alessandro Sanivas are having a terrific scrap for the Class 1 honours here as they battle away in what is currently P6 and 7 overall. In front of Fabian Dufio and Leo Lucas, then Pierre Bryce Mayner is your leader in the Clio category ahead of Jezik Spinkovic and Kevin Day, or is he? Because that is the move up the inside from Eduardo Miranda. Miranda has come through in a third place, getting past Kevin Day, boxing in Stuart Hall as well. So terrific racing in the Clios. But out in front again, it is Jezik Spinkovic. He has got past Pierre Bryce Mayner. So they battle away. Someone's going to have to give in this battle for fourth place as Stuart Hall has a look at Kevin Day. Thinks better of it. Day keeps his car nicely planted a bit of a run wide there from Eduardo Miranda but Miranda is going to hold on to it for the moment as Ricky Coomber is going to try and get past the Gen 3 Cleo that of course is the car of Eman Sadat the Bangladeshi but this is going to be interesting as Kevin Day gets up the inside once again a bit of a lock up from Miranda but can Day hold it to the inside line Miranda's trying to cut back in. They both run off the road and squeeze each other. Miranda gets straight back in front and Day comes on the road right in front of Stuart Hall. That was panic stations for Stuart Hall. My goodness. I think Jeremy Clarkson would probably have described that as a bit of a brown trousers moment. I think Stuart Hall's definitely going to need to change some trousers when he gets out of that car. That was incredibly close there, but it looks like Kevin Day just sort of ran Eduardo Miranda out wide. And of course, this allowed the two uh, of Ricky Coomba and uh, Stadat to work their way past. And of course, Ricky Coomba took the lead in that category as well. Uh, Stadat's looking at the clear and thinking, oh, I must have a go one of those. That looks absolutely fantastic. I want to join in on this fun, uh, on the, all well, these antics. We're so going three wide in yes, on Miranda. Some, then, someone's, lock up. someone's going to have to sort this out, I think, because Day's there back on the inside. Miranda's still holding it. Stadat is going to block Stuart Hall on the way through. And there's still three wide nearly. This time, no problems at all for Miranda. Day's going to get the switchback manoeuvre as Hall gets up on the inside of Sadat. They come back through the chicane and Sadat is trying to hold his car at the apex. And here, uh, coming into the battle, comes Ahmed El Malayi. So Ahmed El Malayi in the 64 car is getting into the mix here as well. And with all of that, they have just allowed Spinkovic and Mayner to disappear into the distance. They're all gone, so no problems at all for those two. This is now a race for third position, as on the inside, Hall has held off Ahmed El Malayi for the moment. And also getting involved in that still is Ayman Sadat, who hasn't quite read the script here. Only the Gen 5s are meant to race against each other, but he's there in the Gen 3, loving it at the moment. He's certainly fancying himself a go in one of these, that's for sure, as we're looking now at the race lead. And Hilal al Azuri has now started to catch Saif al -Amer. Now, it's going to be a very difficult uh, up, o, overtake here to get past Safe Alamari. He's uh, a very defensive driver here, and he doesn't like letting people through at all. Uh, but Hilal Mazruri has really closed in. Fighting of a second is the gap between these two as they're on the back straight now. Now, can Hilal pick up the toe, and can he tuck in on the right-hand side? No, he's going to have to think better of it and do it somewhere else, although not close enough to make a move. But he does sort of close in. There's about a car length separating the two of them, the two GT4 AMG GT cars of Amir al Mahari leading from Amir Faisalin. And there is Faisalin now through turn 10. Now, those two are separated by three point... Oh, no, sorry, they're not separated by 3.8 seconds. They're separated about six tenths of a second between the two of them. As I say, 3.8 seconds, that didn't look like it at all. But uh, out in front, it's just five tenths of a second, and that gap is certainly coming down, uh, but uh, extends now as we enter sector three here for... Uh, uh, the uh, lead overall between the 977, the two Emirati drivers doing a fantastic battle here in the NGK UAE Pro Car Championship, but Hilal al unfortunately dropping back. Here we're back again with the Clios. <laughs> Kevin Day, Stuart Hall and Eduardo Miranda still need to sort this out, and they just haven't. They don't know where to be at the moment. But Stuart Hall, he's flying through at the moment. He's found a way past Eduardo Miranda, and he's looking for a, pass, uh, a move past Kevin Day. I don't know how he's going to do that, because Kevin Day seems to be uh, blocking 
quite a lot. It's quite intense blocking, actually, from uh, uh, Kevin Day, of course, uh, the man who runs XL Motorsport. They have a fantastic, cam uh, fantastic campaign in F4. Yeah, that particular Renault Clio is about as wide as a Buick at the back. Oh, I think there might have been contact between them. Just about getting away with it, though. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Kevin Day hanging on by a thread in front of Stuart Hall. And Eduardo Miranda is just waiting for the moment. It doesn't matter where in the world you go watching Cleos. You can do it at Brands Hatch in Britain in the uh, Toka paddock. You can do it on the streets of Bow in France. You can do it around the Macau gear circuit near Hong Kong or here at Dubai. And they're always going to give you incredible battles. It is wonderful. These cars are such race cars. And now Kevin Day trying to fend off from Eduardo Miranda as the Gen 3 car hangs in behind them. That is Ayman Sadat, the Bangladeshi, and a big lunge up the inside from Miranda. Where did that come from? A run wide from Stuart Hall. Kevin Day's going to lean on him as he comes through. Uh, Stuart Hall's still going to be up on the inside. This is revenge for earlier, mate. Gets in on the curb, hangs him out to dry on the outside line, and Stuart Hall is going to have big pressure from Miranda, and now Ayman Sadat is going to split them up the inside. Hall's going to try and hold it, but he's on the brakes. He locks up. Kevin Day is squeezing that wide, Eduardo Miranda's trying to get in on the inside of Eman Sadat as they all three of them come across the line pretty much en masse as one. And now you've got Stuart Hall, Eman Sadat in the middle, Day to your right, Miranda to your left, and in the back of them, the 64 of Ahmed El Malayi. This is amazing from these five cars. They're still giving us plenty of entertainment and drama. And on the inside, Sadat is nearly going to skate into the side of Kevin Day's car as he gets back on the inside into third in the queue. And now Stuart Hall is trying to fend them all off. And this is just for the third step of the podium in the Clio Cup category, by the way. And Eamon Sadat is just, well, he's just hanging out, having a good time, uh, picking and choosing course and learning. This is his first race weekend with us here in the NGK UA Pro Car Championship, so he's, of course, learning a lot here. I can imagine he'd like to learn a little bit more inside that Gen 5, but Stuart Hall going through the bowl complex. He was also very late on the brakes, a big lock-up for him. The car was uh, jumping all around at the rear end. How he kept that going, I'll never know, and how he kept it in front as well. Uh, there was a, a, a very late lunge from Eduardo Miranda. That could have almost ended in disaster, but luckily Kevin Day kept off him, and they're continuing on here, and this fantastic battle for third still rages on because uh, the battle, the gap between them at the moment is a lot closer than one length of a Renault Clio. As another lock up there from Eduardo Miranda from the right rear. As the, the, the five cars came across the line together, separated by half a second at the end of the last. It was like Monza 69 or uh, Monza 71, depending on which generation you're from. Saif Alimeri still out in front of Hillel Almazrui. I have picked up that uh, we've got Leo Lucas having come into the pits. So more problems for the Porsche number eight by the look of it. And again, Stuart Hall, just a puff of smoke from the brakes, and that's enough for Eduardo Miranda to get a sniff of the opportunity to overtake. Eman Sadat is next up, then Kevin Day, then it, of course, is Ahmed Almalayi, who is there in position, but what a battle as they come out of the final turn. Still, this Renault Clio squabble for third in class, and uh, this race is only in for about 13th overall. So, uh, fascinating stuff. And look, look at the pit wall. They're cheering them on. It's like, come on, come on, give us some more. Give us some more battles. Excellent stuff. If you want to spice things up at the end of the race, then we do play. Bring out the Cleos in the UAE Pro Car. Here comes Kevin Day from a million miles back, diving on the inside of Ayman Sadat. Cheers, buddy. I'll take the place away again. Thank you. Ayman Sadat commits to the outside. Kevin Day gives him enough room, but now they behave like touring car drivers. Bang doors as they come back off to the apex of 17 and 18. Back on the inside, Eamon Sadat says, no, that's for giving me a nerf. And as a result, there's a little bit of a panel fashion session that's going to need to be done on Kevin Day's Clio at the end of the line. And now the race leader is coming off of the safe Alamari. He's looking at what's going on in front of him. He doesn't want anything to do with this. So he's going to streamline his way through, flash the lights to say, hey, look, I'm faster than you. I'm coming through. Hilal Amazrui does the same thing. But oh. Stuart Hall just closed the door on him because, of course, Stuart Hall is in his own race. He wants to still stay in third. That could have been calamity there, and he could have lost that to Eduardo Miranda. But now Hilal Amazrui, unfortunately, he got Got boxed in, didn't he? Because now he's losing heaps of time to save Alamari because he's stuck behind two of the Gen 5 Cleos. He's going to carve his way through there. That was ever so dicey there for them. But there's Eduardo Miranda looking for a way past Stuart Hall to see him back on the top of the pony. We haven't seen him on the pony for quite some time, actually. It was the first round uh, during the NGK UA Pro Car Championship where we saw Eduardo Miranda win outright. And we've not seen him on the podium since, at least, well, this weekend anyway. We did see him on the podium in round two. 
as uh, the Hilal Al Masruri car is now carving its way through but lost heaps of time to the race leader. They were 2.7 seconds at the line. That gap has gone up quite significantly uh, between the two of them. And now the AMG GT4 cars uh, would like to go through here as well. This fantastic battle, although now with the faster cars coming through, it's starting to put some gaps now in, bete in between these Clios. Uh, so unfortunately, the, the battle is sort of laying a little bit low for the time being. We still have plenty of time left on the clock. So let's see if we have another fantastic last lap battle between all of the Cleos as the Omer Al Meheri car now works its way past uh, Kevin Day. A look on the inside of Eduardo Miranda, who'll have to stay oh, on the outside. Oh, this is not sensible. <laughs> the AMG GT4 tried to pick a move on the inside there of Eduardo oh. Miranda, and right at the last minute he went, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Now, this isn't quite going to work. I'm going to have to bail out of this one. He does, he lets him go, then gets back on the power again to run out. And Kevin Day, you know when you're pushing the car to its limits, when you've got three wheels on the deck and one in the air as he comes through the kerb there. But uh, now the sister AMG GT4 car is uh, ploughing its way through. That is the car of Amir Fizulin. And uh, Red Munich is the next car on the race track. That is in fifth position, 17 seconds back from these guys. Uh, big lock-up at the end of the straight there from Stuart Hall as he again tries to defend from Eduardo Miranda. That race just will not cease, will it? They are still giving it plenty of gusto every time they come around. You're just looking at uh, Reni Munich and Alexandro Sarinev Anivas uh, as they battle away with Fabian Dufieu. In fact, Fabian Dufieu actually has a chance to get one over on Anivas in the closing stages here. We've got about 10 minutes to go in this uh, half-hour race, so still plenty to do. And a little bit of a moment there as through comes uh, Hillel Almazrui as he gets past the second place driver in the Cleos, that is Pierre Bryce Mena. We haven't really seen much of uh, Spinkovic and Mena in this one because we've been so busy looking at the third place battle. Ricky Kumba is trying to let Pierre Bryce Mena know, I'm here, get out of the way, and Mena is not really cooperating. So Ricky Kumba eventually has to work down the straight. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a cheeky little wave as he went past. Come on, mate, what are you playing at? And in the A86 category, it is uh, Ahmed Al Marshid who's leading that, and the 72 car down in 19th position, ahead of Di Al Mazruri, uh, who is sitting in second. Abik Anwar circulating in third place in class in the A86 category. Uh, they are separated by what looks to be. Oh, it looks to be quite a significant margin as you separate the three of them. Uh, so we won't see battle with them, not at least until the, the last lap of the race here, because the A86 category seems to come to life when it comes towards the end of the race. As the AMG GT4 car there, I think that's Amal Meheri who's trying to work his way through. Yes, it is, because that's the leading uh, Dragon Racing AMG GT car. Uh, past Ricky Kumba and uh, 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 Pierre Bryce Mina, who is there as well. Uh, so now it's Amir Faislin, but now the AMG has one more car to get through, and Spinovic, who of course is leading the Clio Cup category here. A fantastic drive from the young Polish driver here, who's made his way up from karting now into uh, a tin top, essentially, because now he's behind the wheel of the Clio Cup, and he's he's pretty much in control here of the Clio Cup category. As uh, on the inside goes Amir Almaheri. See, this is the proof that you don't need a billion race cars to make a great race. You just need a handful of closely matched drivers per class, and you're going to get a classic motor race here as we watch Omar al Maheri trying to uh, get away from his teammate, Amir Fazulin. Now, this is an interesting switcheroo because now we're looking at the number 21 car. That is Rea Lucas, who is in eighth position in front of the leading Clio Cup car in the race. There he is. That is Jerzy Spinkovic, the Polish driver, who is running in front of Pierre Bryce Mena, although Ricky Kuma has now overtaken them on the racetrack and on the timing screens as well. But here comes the 79, that is Emir Fazulin to get through on the inside of Jerzyk Spinkovic, who is the leader in the Clio Cup race. Thank you very much. You didn't hold me up at all, so that's fine by me. I'll fly by. Now, eight minutes to go, and it's almost dark here at the Dubai Autodrome. I did say that there was a good chance we might be pitch black by the time we wrap up proceedings here on uh, Saturday evening in Dubai. But Saif Alameri is in front of Hillel Al Masrui, and then Ame Amaheri, Ame Fezulin, Rene Munich from the FIA WTCR All Inkel Munich Motorsport car, uh, in front of Alexandra Sanivas and Fabian De Fieu, who are having a great battle in their Cupra TCR and BMW M4s, respectfully. And then Rea Lucas in the Porsche on his own, uh, Jersey Spinkvich, Ricky Kumba, uh, then Pierre Bryce Maynard, Stuart Hall, Eduardo Miranda, Kevin Day, and Ayman Sadat from Ahmed El Malahi and uh, Rahil Tanasia. Then Charlotte Simmons, who is doing a fair job in 18th place, and she's in front of Ahmad Al-Majid. Uh, then Botti Al-Mazrui 
Avik Anwar, Jahid Karim and Leo Lucas, who I believe has still not come out of the pits after pitting on lap five. Uh, 1 minute 42, 5 1 2 is the fast lap of the race for Safe Alamera, who's just out there this time round. And these back markers have really played in his favour because the gap between himself and Hilal Al Mazruri is 3.7 seconds uh, to at the sharp end of the grid. And then it's a further 8.8 seconds back to Amir Al Bahari, who's in turn 4.6 seconds up the road from the near facelift. So back marker traffic working in his favour as well. Uh, Rene Munik is 7.5 seconds up the road from uh, Alexander Zanibas, who's currently being hounded by the BMW M4 of uh, Fabien de Fuchs, because now they are just three-tenths of a second between the two of them. And that is not a battle for class position, that is just a battle on track, and of course, that is for seventh place overall. Real Lucas is in eighth position, with the uh, Clio Cup leader Spinkovic in ninth, with Ricky Coomba rounding out the top ten, and Seyf Alamere has just gone quick again, because he's just done a 144-423 on that lap. Well, saying that, it's purple, but his best lap was 142-512, his last that was 144, so actually he went slower on that. I'm not sure why I went purple. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, think, I think he has the fastest lap of the entire race, which is why he's showing that. That makes purple. sense. So, Saif Alimeri just continuing on his way. The Porsche going very well indeed. Five minutes and 44 on the clock. So, uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting battle for the last five minutes of racing. Saif Alimeri is just keeping himself together here in front of Hello Al Masrui, and the gap between them is only three and a half seconds. I've just seen that Kevin Day has managed to find a way through and pass Eduardo Miranda finally, uh, but I can't imagine that battle is uh, uh, it's, ah. it's most likely still raging on. Now, this, this is second place in uh, Class 1. This is uh, De Fieu versus Anivas, and they are leaning on each other as they come out at 18. Anivas is going to go clean off the road. De Fieu is uh, going to leave him a little bit of space. He'll tuck back in beneath him, but this is for the Class 1 runner-up spot. And Fabian De Fieu is trying to get through on Alexandros and Anivas. They're going to be side by side, down the straight into the braking zone. Someone's going to have to commit to the corner. Anivas nearly power slides and tank slaps it through the turn in the Cooper TCR and Fabian de Fieu is able to get through into second place in class one in the BMW M4 but Anivas isn't done yet he's going to try and draw back level alongside so Anivas is going to work hard here but the AGMC BMW running in second place in class one would quite like a rather leisurely stroll across the road to base camp at the end of this with a second place trophy in their hands Certainly would, and of course now with Alexander Sanibas doing battle, he's losing time to René Munich, who is, uh, well, quite a ways up the road. It was 9.2 seconds between the two of them, but that's certainly that's gone up now with that sort of off-track excursion there for Alexander Sanibas, due to no fault of his own, of course, to a uh, hard battle here uh, for fifth position, uh, sorry, sixth position overall between the two drivers. It looks like more of the marker boards have succumbed their fate and unfortunately been destroyed. No doubt they'll be back in action tomorrow, but we're through the final corner now for Alexander Alexander Sanivas as uh, we are in our closing stage. We're actually in the final five minutes of the race here at the Dubai Autodrome. Saif Alamari continues to lead by now 4.2 seconds and that gap continues to extend as the track now gets darker and darker. There is Randy Munich and just behind him is Ricky Kumba, both leading in their respective classes as well. Now that is, of course, Ricky. Uh, well, Renny Munich has gone past Ricky Kumba to put him a lap down. However, the good news is for Ricky Kumba. And here comes Eduardo oh. Miranda down towards turn one. We just lost it there, but that was the inside of Kevin Day. But Eduardo Miranda thinks better of it because remember, he's got a race to do tomorrow. He's got two races to do. So keeping a nice clean Clio at the end of the night here is exactly what's on his mind. And uh, was that the Porsche that just squeezed through? I think it was. Uh, that went past the two of them there going through uh, the uh, first sector of the track there but that was ooh, ever so dicey there as the bmw m4 uh, continues on three minutes to go and it's a very interesting challenge now because they've got uh, pierre bryce mena to lap he doesn't cause too much of a headache at all for alexandro sanivas and so that's uh, perfectly plausible for Pierre Bryce Mena to run in second place but because of the traffic look at the gap that Jozik Spinkovic has been able to pull out over Pierre Bryce Mena in the Clio Cup class race and also as a result of the traffic Fabian de Fieu has been able to get clear of Alexandros and Nivas as well so going through the traffic is actually a really integral part of making sure you've got the best out of the car and the racetrack in uh, fair play the lights are coming on in Dubai Motor City and the nightlife, I'm sure, and the uh, restaurants will be alive and kicking with great battles. But the last two and a half minutes of race action 
about to come towards us. So we'll see where Saif Alamiri is going to come through to begin lap 15, because lap 15 could well be the last. So we'll double check as the drivers come through, but it has been a fantastic final race of the day and second race of the day for the UAE Pro Car Championship. A great performance from them after the multiple class wins we had earlier on. We're just going to wait and see uh, where Saif Alamiri is. His best lap is a 142.5. As we watch Ayman Sadat battle away with the 64 of Ahmed Al Malayi. So where is Saif Alamiri? I'm fairly sure he's about to start the final lap of the race because his best lap is a 142.5. We watch in the distance to see the 977 Porsche and that is going to be the last lap of the race. Here he comes out of the final turn. So the battles are raging. Into the last lap then goes the 977 Saif Alamiri. In the background you can just see the number 7 Porsche of Helil al Mazruri, And that is going to be a canter to the flag for Saif Alamiri. And just behind it was Rahil Tanaja. Now, not such an eventful weekend here for the Indian driver. You usually see him in the mix for the top three. I think he's taking it easy here. I think we'll see him do a fantastic battle in the Clio Cup. But he's, he's having a relatively incident-free race there. And he's been relatively away from all the battles as well, just biding his time in hopes uh, that someone would fumble over one another. But unfortunately, it hasn't gone his way. And he's just circulating there, just uh, enjoying his time behind the Clio Cup here at the moment. Of course, we'll see him back in action tomorrow. So he'll be off of the podium. Uh, but for this man right here looking for another outright race win here is the 977 of Saif Alamiri. He's leading by 7.5 seconds. He's through turn 10 for the final time here and into the left-hander of turn 11. Just a handful of more corners as he's now into sector 2 here for the final time in his 977. The Emirati driver Saif Alamiri. It's hard to find a car that he hasn't won in so far here in the United Arab Emirates because he's won in the A86 category, he's won, he's won in the Porsche. I, I think we need to get him behind the wheel of a Clio at some point because we need to see him what he can do in that because we saw a fantastic battle and we know that uh, Saif Alamiri has a very feisty attitude. So it'd be fantastic to see him behind the wheel of a Clio. But here he comes on uh, some back marker Clios here. This, of course, is... Uh, Al Malehi and of course Sadat just in front of him as well. But one more corner to go now for Saif Alamiri, looking for a second win here in the NGK UAE Pro Car Championship. One corner to go for one more race victory. And a brilliant job and a complete clean sweep of the races today. The chequered flag flies for Saif Alamiri. He cruises over the line to ensure that the cars in front of him can finish another racing lap. Hello, Al Masrui comes home in second place. And uh, he uh, acknowledges his uh, main rival in the race there as they cruise across the line. It's party time over at uh, Saif Alimeri's crew. And uh, the Ramdan Motorsports team can be very happy indeed with that race victory. It's a victory in class as well for Omar El Maheri for the second time. There is his teammate Amir Fezulin coming home for fourth position in the Mercedes GD4. So brilliant stuff from them. And it is going to be Rene Munich who comes home in his FIA WTCR allinkle.com Munich Motorsport Honda Civic TK uh, fantastic job for him he's been absolutely amazing in this one and he will come through a few seconds after the rest of the field but in uh, fifth position overall there is the win in Toyota G8 uh, AE86 sorry that is the win for Ahmed Al Majid great performance from him he really did uh, take a very smooth and mature drive. Rennie Munich has now come over the line to get the victory. There he is. And in second place, Fabian Dufieu comes through second in class one. Alexander Sarivas is able to come through in third position. He gets the final place on the podium in class one. What about the Cleos? Because obviously we're going to watch them come through. Ricky Coomba has come through for his class victory as well. So a great run from Ricky Coomba. And there is Jozik Spinkovic. He takes the Cleo Cup race win in front of Pierre Bryce Mina and third position after all of that squabbling. By the look of it, it should still just about be Stuart Hall unless Eduardo Miranda has done the unthinkable in the last couple of laps and closed him up. But there he is, Stuart Hall will come through just about intact as he gets uh, his third place finish in the Clio battle. What a great race that was, all the way from the start to the finish, action throughout. It certainly has been, and unfortunately we don't get to see more from the NGK UA Pro Car Championship, at least for another week, because they'll be, of course, back here at the Dubai Autodrome, but a fantastic race throughout. We're still waiting for, uh, oh, actually, no, we've had all the drivers come across the line, so that wraps up the final race of the day. We'll, of course, have the podium presentation shortly for the NGK UA Pro Car Championship here, so it's time for me to say goodbye, and I'll leave you with Jake Sanson. 
Thank you, Chris. You'll head to the podium and uh, you guys have been royally entertained by some absolutely fantastic battles in the UAE Pro Car Championship. That concludes our race running here at the Dubai Autodrome in the second of our National Race Days 2021-22. My big thanks to everybody from uh, Studio Prime Vision for putting the stream together from the Dubai Autodrome, from the NGK UAE Pro Car Championship as well for race two. We'll leave you with the highlights from another thrilling battle in the UAE Pro Car Championship from Jake Sanson and Chris Milbourne and from all of us here. Ta-ta for now.